Hey everyone! Hello, happy, happy Friday. Friday! It is time to wind Cheer. down. <laughs> wind down. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Cheers. Now, what's, Cheers. What's in that glass? Okay, I'm totally cheating today. This is an energy drink because I need it. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's been one of those uh, super hyper busy weeks and today a super hyper busy day. And I have uh, I was just telling you, I, I haven't even had a chance to eat anything. So I was like eating a hard boiled egg on the run as I was getting ready. Yeah, not a, not a good thing, but um, time to breathe and wind down with a I nice relaxing and- energy drink. Right. <laughs> Right. And, <laughs> and what are you drinking? What are you drinking today? I, 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 it's summer, so I have switched to white wine. Very nice. To white wine. And, and our week has been, uh, has been good. It has been full. We've been, uh, I've been coaching um, most of the week. So I have people here doing full day coaching sessions. So um, that's always, um, it takes a lot of energy, which is cool, and it's it's energizing, and I love seeing the results. And if they're just great days, little everybody a little brain dead by the end of them, but yeah, it's all but, good. It's but all that's good. all good. Yes. Hello, shout out to Bob and Barb. Great topic, Barb says. I'm putting together a magical project offline this week. Wow, um, magical. I love magical projects, um, but. <laughs> Today's topic was kind of inspired, Tony, by, you know, I go back and forth between Arizona and Colorado lately, and I've been um, noticing, you know, we always think, oh, we could sit poolside or sit by the beach and get work done. Not so much. Like, it's, it's really hard to work. Well, number one in the sun, I can't, I can't work in the sun because of okay. just the heat and everything else. But I, I was trying to think of, okay, where is the most inspiring place to actually be productive? Not inspiring to sit and look at an ocean and be inspired, but to be productive and to stay innovative and come up with new ideas and new ways of doing things in our business. And so I started just kind of thinking of that and then researching that and found a couple really interesting articles about that. So that's kind of where the the birth of this topic. So I'm, hello, Helen. Um, And we're going to ask for your input out there of the the areas that you work in. But um, we're going to announce, well, I'm going to announce something that's going on next week, special episode next week. And then um, at the end, I'll I'll give more details on that. But Next week, we're going to do a special one-hour show, and we want you, our fabulous viewers, to come on live with us because we can have four people. We can do Brady Bunch here, and we want you to share over this past season, what have you implemented based on stuff that we've talked about in this in, in our chats, in our wind-down chats? So, um, or implement some, or what, what has inspired you or yeah. what, what has truly made you think or the most valuable thing you, you're taking away because we're doing this show, right, Gina, because it's going to be the last one of the season. Season. We're it's taking the, the summer one. off. We're taking the summer yes. off and we will be back in September. So we thought to celebrate this last episode of Wind Down for season one. Uh, we do a longer episode because the time always goes by so fast and we're always so surprised. And we would invite you guys to be part of it. So, yeah, anything that you want to share and we bring someone in and then when you're done, we can, you know, take you out of the lobby and bring somebody else in. And yeah. uh, we think it would be a great way to uh, to share uh, yeah. memories. To share what we're, what we're doing. And, yeah. and it's, um, hi, Barb, again. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so we're going to, I love this tool, Be Live, that we use to do our Facebook lives because it has a lobby area, like a green room and we can bring several people in and keep you in queue and then kind of move people in and out. So it's really easy. You don't need any special equipment except a computer that has a camera and a microphone. So um, super fun. That'll be really fun next week. But this week we want to talk about inspirational workplaces that inspire innovation. And um, there's an article that I read that talked about, you know, just the coolest offices and what does inspire. And I thought there were some interesting, and I'll put the all the links in our, in our notes here, but I thought there were some common things that I'm curious if any of you have. Number one, 
a lot of the innovative workspaces had live plants. And I looked around because I used to have a live plant in here. But sadly, it died. When I have dead plants. Does that count? No, no, not very inspirational. Oh I'm curious, who can keep live plants in, in their office? I think the key is you have to be in your office every day. Yes. That, that's part of our problem, going yeah. to multiple locations. I need to find somebody that will. And in Arizona, I realize now I can have live plants because I have a house sitter that comes and they water stuff and they do little things. She said, let me know if you have any live plants here that I can water. And I said, oh, I didn't think of that. So I didn't put any live plants in the house. Um, And here I try to get my family to keep things alive while we're gone. Not always. Not so much. But live plants, they say, really do. Not only does it help, obviously, generate, you know, oxygen for our brains to be more uh, conducive and sharp, but um, it does, they they say that that's one of the key things that inspire innovation is having, and I think I I was giving that thought of the, the fact that you have to nurture a live plant, you have to care for it. Don't you feel like that? Now, see, you're giving that look, so I feel like you don't agree with I don't think this. anybody in those offices actually cares for those plants. Oh, no. Yeah, I'll show you some. They actually have, like, crazy, scrungly, not in their lobbies, at their workspaces. Like, they had plants and little, you know, violets. Do they, do they or, take care of them, or does the company provide someone who takes care of them? Well, they look yeah. like, because they're not professional looking plants, they look yeah. like they're kind of, and a lot of the co-working spaces, um, you know, the people just bring in little plants. And I thought, I love gardening. I love plants for the sake of, there's some there's some sense of nurturing. Like I in, in my okay. house here in Colorado, I have live plants. And I love, when I see them wilting, I feel like, oh, I need to care for them. And I, I, I think that can do something for our soul that makes us feel like um, we're caring for things. And maybe again, it's just thinking differently um, than just coming in, sitting at your computer and working. But that, that was definitely a common thing on, on um, in these offices, these workspaces. The second one was having natural light and um, which helps the plants. I, which does help the plants unless it's too much natural light. But um, I definitely agree with this one. And we in this house in Colorado, we have a, a big office downstairs, Kirk's. We, you know, it's in the dungeon. Yes. And uh, the basement is is built out and there's a big office and it's double the size of my office up here. And Kirk always says, Why don't you use that office down there? I'm like, Oh, there's no way. There's no way. I I need lots of light. Um, or I will wilt like a plant. Yes. Absolutely. And, and yeah, do you you how many windows like you have windows right there around you, don't you? Oh, yes. Yes. Now, one of the places my art studio, excuse me, my art studio and the place where I do a lot of my writing is downstairs in the basement. Interesting. Small window. Small but window. do you stay but down I, there? You don't you don't spend a whole day down there, do you? Oh, yeah. You will. Easily, easily. But um, interesting. but it's bright. It's a bright space. It's not a dark space. There may not be a whole lot of natural light, but there's a lot of light. Light, it's a yeah. light space. And that Kirk's got lamps and lights and everything else, but there's no natural light. There's very few little windows there. Right. Um, Jerry said in his corporate days, you were responsible for plans on your desk. I think that's typically the case. Like, cool. Yeah, typically. I, I'm not positive, but I think these look like they were cared for. And Ellen says, caring for a plant is like giving them love time. Yeah. Um, when they're healthy, it tells you, I work hard, but I have time to care. Oh, I, I like that thought. Yeah. Like, I even feel better about myself. Very cool. <laughs> um, I, I do think there's something very, like, I love spending the first hour in the morning outside watering the plants in the garden, the flowers and seeing them and looking at the little sprouts. And I feel like there's something that inspires me um, to be creative and not that I created that plant, but I planted the seeds or I planted the flowers. So I think it can help. Not not a, not a gardener. Yeah. So green plants have them all over the house. Uh, not actually in my office, though, but um, have them all over the house. Love them. Glad somebody else waters them. Um, the thought of going out and gardening just makes me want to. Uh, so I, I don't know. My, my guess about the plants is, though, I do find them very peaceful. And my guess about why the plants 
maybe contribute to, um, and I'm not so sure that inspires innovation is the word that I would use, more as conducive perhaps to, to innovation, but I think plants change, right? They sure. grow, you got little buds that are coming out. Um, you look at them and yes, I, 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 all joking aside, do think there's that whole element of care, but they also change. They grow sure. one day, they look different than they did a week ago. And so whether it's subliminal or not, we are taking care of something that is living and growing changing. and changing. And that subliminally will send us those kinds of messages as well, I believe. I better get another plant in here. Yeah, get another, um, get another. Yeah, get another plant. So, so they said plants, lots of natural light. Another one that I, I'm going to show you some pictures of these workspaces, but that I totally agree with and love is having multiple styles of workspace. So they have cubicle. Well, none of these had cubicles. They had, um, they called them work pods. So it almost looked like a booth at a restaurant. Um, they had chairs with tables. They had restaurant, look like a little cafe areas. They had cool meeting rooms and places. They had outdoor seating, indoor seating. And my question to everyone listening right now is, do you sit in multiple places during the day? Does that help you um, stay motivated or inspired or innovative? I certainly move. I move a lot. I have different yeah. spaces for different things, or I'll go to Starbucks if I feel I've like exhausted the spaces in the house. Um, right. But different spaces become associated with different activities for me. And uh, and so, yes, I, I definitely yeah. move a lot, a great deal. A lot. Yeah. Um, and I think that is one of the things I, I already this morning, I've worked in four different spots and I think it, it is part of it is I'm trying not to sit so much. So I'll stand, I'll go on the treadmill desk. I'll sit outside in the morning hours. Um, and then in here in my office, if I have to focus and get something done on my big computer, otherwise I try to stay out of the office feel. And I don't know why I love my office. I feel like it's creative, but I still feel for some reason, if I'm in, like if I'm in a room with no windows, I feel like I'm on timeout. Um, yeah. I'm being punished somehow and right. I can't do it. Um, right. Now, Ellen says I need to be oriented Southwest. Oh, interesting. Some, something happens to my brain at sunset. Very creative at that time. That's really interesting um, to pay attention. You know, we always say the cycles during the day, but it could even be the, you know, what you're seeing or experiencing um, around you, the sunsets, the sunrises. I, yeah, I'm that's... definitely morning, much more creative in the morning. And uh, if I'm up early before everybody else in that, those silent, sometimes an hour, hour and a half before there's any other movement except the dogs, that can be definitely my most creative time of the day. By yeah. sunset, by sunset, I'm done. <laughs> you wind down. And I wind down. Yeah. Now, though, there have been, uh, actually, Jer and I were up north uh, about 10 days ago, and we were sitting at sunset, actually, out on the deck looking at the lake with a glass of wine in our hands. And Jer came up with a phenomenal idea. So there is there is something to be said for relaxing. Yeah. And the times of day was when the times of day when we are just stopping our brain and thinking about something else, even if we're having sideline conversations, which frees up the space in the brain to be creative. Well, and I think something you said a minute ago of you have different spaces for different activities. Yes. Um, I do think, and, and when you work in a, a large corporate office, I mean, we're talking about, you know, Google and Dropbox and Airbnb, right. those companies they have these different spaces for different activities. Obviously right. you have a meeting space, but even those meeting spaces take on different feels for the type of meetings that you're having. And then they have outdoor sitting space. They have now lots of benches and pods and places you can sit and work on your lap like you would right. at home. And um, I think that does help if you feel that you're in a workspace where you sit at a desk all day, it could be stifling some of the innovative juices because you're, you're in the same, same space, same old, same old. We start, you know, doing the same thing. Right. Um, Absolutely. Jen says in my most productive, she's most productive in the morning. I'm not sure how creative I am, but I'm, if I'm going to do anything at hundred percent, I have to do it in the morning. I'm with, you, Deb, Deb. I'm with yeah, you. Yeah. But Deb also has a little one. And I think seasons in our life, like, 
you, Tony, said you have an hour and a half before, like you can get in an hour, hour and a half before everybody gets up. That would be a luxury for me. Um, there are people. Or but I'm not at five. Well, yeah, but if I got up at five, the dogs would be up at five. See, oh, yeah, I, got well, I, I was talking about human people, not not four legged <laughs> people. The four legged people are usually up too. They're just um, as needy. Yeah. They're just as needy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. They can, ours maybe not as needy as your three. Yeah, but, uh, because I always want everyone to stay asleep, and I want to sneak somewhere where I don't have to feed an animal or do something. Again. I want to. Um, be able to have quiet time. Um, and Deb says, I have to get up early before everyone else at five, five, five thirty. Yeah. And sneak down there. Um, oh, yeah, that's I'm, interesting. I'm not pouring my coffee at five 30, 25 to six. It's, uh, yeah. I, 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 I have disappointed myself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marilyn. Hey, Marilyn. Uh, she says, Pablo Picasso always believed that the most creative time for anyone is Absolutely. when you are exiting your subconscious. Oh, that's true. And entering your conscious mind. So before we wake or before we go to sleep, um, he always tried to prolong this sleeping, waking state for as long as possible, which I was listening to a podcast of a guy, uh, Jim Quick. He has a podcast called Quick Brain. Yes. Really good, really good podcast. And he talks about the importance of having a journal so that when you're in that state, yeah. you can quickly get information down um, during that state. I, does it count if you walk into your kitchen really groggy and you just stay in that state for a while? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it does. And I think I mentioned on, on wind down before the top five places where people get their best ideas yeah. and certainly in bed, meaning waking up in the middle of the night or just before you go to sleep or just when you wake up in the morning is one of them. And the others are exercise and in the car uh, and, and shower. shower. And, uh, and traveling on vacation or working out, if I didn't mention that one. So right. those are all moments to, to who made that point, Marilyn's point, when you're, you're slipping into a different type, a different space in your consciousness, and then there's space right. for other ideas to come in. Yeah. And Bob That's says most creative ideas come when he's not in the workplace, which is interesting. I think once we sit down, we're, I was going to make. Yeah, we're kind of sitting down, getting down to a task. And therefore, we're not free to be creative and innovative. We're we're accomplishing things now. We, you know, we're on well, the to do list. That's why. And I, I didn't jump in at the time, but at the very beginning of the show, you you were talking about you know places that inspire innovation, and then you went places where you can be productive and be inspired. <laughs> well, and yeah. I'm going, well, that's Gina. That's Gina because I'm not sure <laughs> that you can be doing as much as you do, uh, and maybe that's just how you're built. I think most normal folks uh, who are not as gifted as you are find it difficult to be functional and being productive and doing tasks and still be creating the space for new ideas to come in. Well, I think one thing that I, I feel like I have an advantage, we work with, well, so does everybody, like we, when you work with many different industries, you're constantly making connections of this worked over here. Absolutely. How can, you know, and maybe, maybe that's part of it. But yeah, I, I definitely like, I, I listen to podcasts while I'm in the shower. I, I have a notepad in there. When I'm on walks, I listen to podcasts um, or audio books because I tend to be able to formulate ideas or it starts making connections for me while I'm doing that. So, yeah. um, and I love that so too. And, and, but I, I, I need, Space and silence. Yeah, you, yeah. At some point to process it all, because if I don't, I'm, I'm taking in all of this information, and it's actually getting to the point where I'm inundated with ideas, overload, and yeah. inundated with connections, and then I'm writing them down on pieces of paper, and I'm not really getting back to them because I haven't stopped long enough to figure out how it all fits together. Right. Well, it's interesting because Deb, yeah. you know, Deb said shower or just before bed. And it was interesting that in a couple of these articles where they talked about um, innovative workspaces, they said home, the, the top uh, trends, if you will, for home offices were now they were turning big closets 
into, which I, that would make me crazy because there's no windows, but they were turning closets and bathrooms into workspaces. And they showed some bathrooms. Now these were large luxury bathrooms with big walk-in showers and big, but they had a desk in there. And I thought, okay, that is why. Crazy. I mean, if you've got a house big enough to have a bathroom that big, surely you've got extra space. But well, I'm thinking though, you wouldn't have to, you're, you would minimize the amount of time in between showering or going to the bathroom. You could get a lot more done, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> forget listening to podcasts in the shower you're just working in the shower put your desk in the shower oh and you want to take stuff um oh i might have to try God. that <laughs> no, no no and bob says like i can take a break and oh and and yeah when you're on it when that downtime when you're not working you can take a break and answers will come um yes. And now Len says for her in the morning is it's about reading concentration focus. And then there's a break and then at sunset, it's about creating and letting go, which is really oh, cool. When you have a, yeah. When you have a flow to your day, I think that's really cool. Um, and Absolutely. Deb definitely says, I listen to podcasts while exercising and Deb says no paper allowed in the bedroom or bathroom. Hmm. What type of paper? Um, so I couldn't <laughs> do the desk in either location. Um, yeah. <laughs> No well, let me let me show allowed. you. I, there's a story behind that one. No there is allowed in the bedroom. Can you read, Deb? Like, if you have a book that's made yeah. out of paper, can you read? I'm guessing. Oh, see, that's interesting, Deb. Do you read like for enjoyment in bed, or are you saying no read. work, no work type reading? Yeah. Um, in bed. Yeah, I break that rule all the time. I have no doubt. She says, I listen, I don't read. I don't read. Yeah, yeah. me too. I do audiobooks. So um, so no paper. She can listen, but just no paper books. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I want us to look at some of these offices. And then what I want us to do is see, okay, in our own work space, in our own work life, are there ways we can incorporate some of these? I'm fascinated by co-working spaces because I love being around around people, but by myself. I, it's weird, but I like working in hotel lobbies or restaurants or coffee shops because right. that inspires me. Um, and so I, I want to look at some of these. So let me share. Let me add this to the broadcast. And I'm going to, let's see. I want everyone to tell me I'm going to try to make it big. Let's see. Uh, it's not that big, but it's bigger. Do um, you have something up there? Oh, yeah, I put I put my desktop. So here is Dropbox's office. Oh, okay. um, and what I really like about this one, I love that they have these comfy couches or they have chairs. They have, again, kind of these laid back uh, wooden lounge chairs against the wall. Um they definitely have some rooms. Oh, that was another thing a lot of them had. And you have, Tony, as walls to write or draw and create ideas yes. on a wall. Not just having a little board on yes. your wall, but a lot of these places have the entire wall or some of them an entire room. And Kirk has recently done that where they did their whole room as a whiteboard. Um, but this one I thought was cool with the wood. It's very homey. This is Dropbox's. Uh, headquarters or their office, their meeting rooms. They, you know, again, just a cool feel, but lots of different types of, of spaces. And I, I thought that I, I really want to find out about this. They have the romance chamber, the breakup room and arrears. So I'm not sure what that means, but um, lots of different little uh, spaces to come together again, spaces to sit alone, but not be alone. Yes. And or have little impromptu meetings. And then I thought this was interesting. It looks like a man cave uh, TV room, but there was a piano. And this was just a cool lounge space, workout facilities um, in these bigger companies and and lots of fun type spaces. Looking at Airbnb's space, I thought was really interesting because it's very light, lots of natural lighting and natural things, and then these pops of color everywhere, which is another trend I see with the dog here. There are so many people who work in places, both my husband, Kirk, and our daughter, Bailey, work places where people bring their dogs to work. How cool is that? I'm fascinated by that. I would find that, 
I think it's cool, but I would find that to be so distraught. I would be, I don't know. I find that to be distracting. Your dogs work. Your dogs are like, there when you work. Yeah, my, my dogs are here. But if I were working at a, a place, at a, I don't know, I think I would have a hard time focusing with all the dogs coming and going. But maybe after a while, you oh, just I get see used what to it. Mean. Okay, yeah, I get it. Like, it's not one day. They bring them to work every day and have dogs in their meetings and stuff. <laughs> it's crazy. But they say in a lot of these places, uh, creative and innovative spaces. And yes. again, what I what I am taking away from all these, you don't see the old style, same chairs, same tables, same, same, same. These are all different types of seating in different types of spaces, which to me is fascinating. And for us to look at that in our own spaces, are we creating enough different spaces to inspire different thoughts? Interesting. Interesting thoughts. So I thought these were beautiful. Obviously, these are, you know, they're spending millions of dollars on these. So we should be able to steal ideas. This one is beats the question. Yeah, I I think that's the question is those are all wonderful. But literally, each and every one of them costs probably close to a million dollars. So easily, what, what, what do we do as entrepreneurs? How do we create the space? And I think a lot of it, what what those large organizations need to do, Gina, is they need to create one space that caters to everybody. Um, And so, but for us, perhaps one of the advantages of being entrepreneurs and working on our own with a small team is we have fewer people to cater to and we can be more in tune with what makes us feel more creative and creating those spaces uh, as opposed to trying to think of a space where I think Apple just, uh, their new building is there's 28,000 people in it or something incredible. Um, But how do you create creative spaces when you've got so many different personalities? So I think the first step for us as small business owners is how do we function? What is our creative style? What makes us feel more creative? And once we find that, how do we creatively create that space? (laughs) And if you feel like you are stuck in that rut, these are definitely things to explore. Color. Absolutely. What what colors are we surrounding ourselves with? I mean, I used to have this wall was my purple wall and I had a dark purple ceiling in this office. And when we moved to Chicago and came back, I, I made it all neutral. And now I feel like it's kind of boring, but I put enough on the walls um, that I feel like it's at least the creative part comes out. And, and literally, there's so many clocks that are all ticking and going that Kirk can't work in here because he said it's too noisy. Too loud. I like it. Yeah. Um, but I, but again, I, then I move to another space. I need to be outside as much as possible. So I'll set up work tables. I can't sit out in the sun, but I can sit at a table outside, almost like a cafe. And I've set up areas like that to work. Um, but I, you're right. You have to find what it, what works for you. Well, Alain has yeah. an interesting point. She said she has too many shelves, which um, brings dust. So, yeah, you do have to think of, is it? And yet we look at it and go, oh, it's too much of a hassle to change that. Um, and yet that could be sometimes just freshening up our workspace can really bring that type of change. Moving the directions of things, moving furniture could be um, a good way to spark that creative juice in us and um, bring some interesting things. I'm curious if anybody has a really creative place they go to or what they've created in their house. Um, sometimes it's what you've been able to create, which is really cool. Um, Deb says one space for everyone is tricky. Several spaces that work for most at different points in the workday for different activities can be a good solution. Um, I think for small business, we have to look at utilizing more than one room in our house. If we work from home, a lot of times we think I have to work in my office which may not be the case. It may it may work for you, but if it's if you're looking to add change, it could be that you're. I find I need different chairs, so moving and standing, and you know that could be. Um, and yeah. Jerry said there is oh there's idea paint. Is that what you guys have? Yes, yes. And idea that's paint. The whiteboard. Yeah, you put it you put it on the wall. It turns the wall into a whiteboard. Yeah, amazing. Which I've been thinking about. I have, but I have a really cool painting on my wall. The one space that I have here that I'd like, but I think I might have to sacrifice that because it would be a cool whiteboard wall. Would be, would uh, be. And when yeah. there's nothing on it, you can put your painting back. That's true. 
that's true. Then I could just put it back. Um, so lots of fun ideas. I would love to continue the conversation. If you guys find cool pictures of places or show us a picture of your creative workspace here in the comments. So whether you are listening live or the replay, we'd love to see your spaces. So it would maybe just spark some uh, creativity in us to implement some of those ideas. Now, again, reminder, next week, special one hour show still at the same time. So 2 p.m. Eastern, noon Mountain Time, 11 Pacific. Right. Um, and we're going to do a one hour show and we want you guys to come on live and share with us something that you have been inspired to do or something you have done. And, oh, I have to share this because Lindsay, this is me. Lindsay says, I rearrange my office at least twice a year for a fresh reboot. <laughs> that is, I love, I love rearranging my office. It's just, <laughs> I haven't I done it in a while. It, I just clean off the clutter. Twice. And then it looks new. And then and it looks then like it looks a new, new office. I can actually, <laughs> like, wow, yes. I have a new desk. For a day. <laughs> um, yeah. So we hope that you guys get inspired. You think of new ways to, to do your business. and yeah, to create- we want, Gina, you mentioned that we might want people to reach out if they want to come on the show next week. Yeah, they have to. You have to reach out to us so we can give you a special link. Oh. There's a special secret entrance to being in the show versus watching the show. So all you have to do is send either Tony or I a a DM on Facebook, or you can email us and say, I'd love to come on and just share, even if it's for 30 seconds or a minute, or if you've got, you know, something that you've implemented, we'd love to hear it. And And, um, you do have to be camera ready. You You do do have have to be be dressed. You You have have to be be dressed, dressed. but only (laughs) from like here up. Yeah. You you can no idea. Gina and I could be like naked. Naked. We are naked from the waist down right now. From the waist down. And it's not yeah. even really the waist, Gina. It's really just kind of under the... the. <clears throat> um, yeah. So, yeah. And and we may be, be coming uh, and approaching some of you as well that we know have been on the show. So please don't be shy. We no. would really, really love to get feedback and thoughts. I know that I was talking to somebody the other day and she said to me, it was the one wind down show where you said this that really really stuck with me so if you have any moments like that those are the kinds of things we want to sh- want you to share as well yeah and it, and it could be something that this show inspired you to think of that's totally off a topic that we covered but it's something that would benefit everyone else we'd love to hear it so again if just let us know to drink wine earlier in the day drink wine early, then you will have no hesitation for coming on the show, but you may forget to get dressed. So that's why we have the green room that's that will right. bring you in first to make sure you're dressed before we pull you into the show. <laughs> but but what I was saying is if we have encouraged people to drink wine earlier, our job, our job is that. Or energy drinks, either one. If we've encouraged you to stay hydrated in any way, <laughs> any way, shape or form, <laughs> we've done our job. We've done our job. Okay. Um, you guys you are all me. awesome. We love that you guys are here. We hope you have a fabulous weekend. Cheers to you. And, and we will see you next week for the last episode of season one of Time Monday. to Wind Down. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye.